Hello everyone and Dattatre Nikam, welcome you all on our channel eFunda, new day, new topic and our today's topic is instrument calibration, understanding and implementation and if you are new to our channel then please visit to our channel eFunda and watch all the videos created related to the various topics of engineering, fundamentals, procurement engineering, telecommunication engineering, instrumentation and control engineering, deliverables and many more and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get latest notification on upload of our new video on our channel eFunda. So let's begin with our today's topic that is instrument calibration, understanding and implementation. Introduction to instrument calibration. Instrument calibration is one of the primary processes used to maintain instrument accuracy. Calibration is the process of configuring an instrument to provide a result for a sample within an acceptable range. The calibration is the process of adjusting an instrument or equipment to meet the manufacturer specification to the instrument engineer or a technician. Calibration is the process of determining the relationship between the values of the quantity being measured and that indicated on a measuring instrument. And all the instrument received at the site need to be recalibrated at the site as there is a possibility that the instrument might get damaged or its calibration or a calibrated band range may get disturbed due to the vibration and the lateral movement during the transportation from one place to the another place at the site location. Similarly, the frequency of a recalibration will vary with the type of equipment and the prevailing conditions where the equipment is being used. As a thumb rule, the recalibration should be performed at least once a year and depends on the application and based on the client requirements, it may vary. Similarly, one can see the relationship where the signal and concentration of the instrument is plotted where one can see the graph where LOD, LOQ, LOL, dynamic range, noise, slope gives the sensitivity detail, these are mentioned in the graph. Where a calibration curve is plotted showing a limit of detection that is LOD, limit of quantification that is LOQ, dynamic range and limit of the linearity that is LOL. This is how the introductions are covered and we will see the more details related to the instrument calibration. Mainly in this video, we are going to touch the topic related to the instrument calibration where now we will see common terms used in the calibration process. First is the calibration range. The calibration range of an instrument is defined as the region between the limits within which as a quantity is being measured or received or transmitted expressed by starting the lower that is LRV and upper that is URV range values. These limits are defined by the zero and pan values. First, the zero value is the lower end of a range or a LRV and the upper range value that is URV. For example, if an a instrument is to be calibrated to measure the pressure in the range of 0 to 400 PSIG, then LRV will be 0 and UR will be 400 PSIG. So the calibration range for that particular instrument is 0 to 400 PSIG. Second point related to the span, span is defined as the algebraic difference between the upper and lower range values that is the span is equals to URV minus LRV. By considering the above calibration range which is 0 to 400 PSIG then the span is calculated as a 400 minus 0 therefore the span value is become 400. This is all about the calibration range. Second point is the instrument range. The instrument range refers to the capability of an the instrument it is often nameplate rating of the instrument for example an instrument nameplate rating is instrument range that is 0 to 800 psig then the output of that particular instrument will be 4 to 20 milliamps so the calibration range 
is for that particular instrument where we have the complete instrument range. Generally, one has to consider or follow the note that never get confused with the instrument range with the calibration range. These two are different terminologies as one in instrument range can capture different calibration ranges. That is, if an instrument range is 0 to 800 PSIG, then the instrument can be calibrated to 0 to 400 PSIG or even 0 to 800 PSIG, that is a full range for an application with a high pressure in which case the instrument range becomes the calibration range of that particular device. That is why the instrument range and instrument calibration range is a very critical and one should remember this difference. Third, zero span adjustment. Zero and span adjustments are commonly done on the analog and the smart instrument by adjusting both zero and span. We may set the instrument for any range of an instrument within the manufacturer limit. For example, most analog instruments, zero and span adjustment are interactive adjusting. One has an effect on the other, whereas for the smart instrument, there is no interaction between the span and the zero adjustment. Fourth, five point calibration. When calibrating an instrument is a rule, that the instrument data point should include the reading minimum at 0%, 25%, 50%, 75% and 100% and this is often referred as a 5 point calibration. Fifth, field calibration. In the field calibration, the instrument is not removed from the process or the service condition. In fact, it remain at the hookup position and calibrated or tested at the true process and ambient condition. Sixth, in shop or a bench calibration. A bench calibration is a procedure where the instrument is calibrated at a calibration bench using the calibration devices to simulate the process rather the calibrating the devices in the field using the actual process itself. Seventh, bench tester. A bench tester is used for carrying out the bench calibration of an instrument or a device, it consists of a highly accurate standard gauge and pressure source producing test pressure required for the instrument. Most benches are fabricated on the job site by the instrument technician, while some of them are ordered as a complete system from the vendor to have the ready made setup for the test benches. Calibrations or calibrator. It is used to calibrate the instrument that require calibration, typically calibration testation includes a block calibrator and fluidized bath are used to calibrate probes, RTD, thermocouple, B, signal reference is used to calibrate panel meter and temperature, controller, this type of calibrator is able to generate the electrical signal. C. Pneumatic calibrator which provides a regulated pressure regime required to test or calibrate pressure measuring instruments. 9. Calibration record. These are the document that is done to ensure that the history of the devices or instrument is not lost. It is also aid in troubleshooting any drift in the instrument performance over the period of a time where it is installed at the site. Tenth, traceability. All calibration should be performed traceable to a nationally or internationally recognized standard. Traceability is defined as the property of a result of a measurement whereby it can be related to appropriate standard in a report. One can refer to the reports shown on the screen where a left hand side is particularly for the level transmitter calibration, on the right hand side is the calibration report for the control valves. One can see the reports on the left hand side where the level transmitter instruments are details are included along with their tag number and model number detail etc are one can refer from the table. Similarly, one can see the calibration record where inputs is placed in mm water column where percentage that is a 0, 
25 percent, 50 percent, 75 percent, 100 percent that is a 5 point calibration and input is 0, 4, 2, 7, 0.5, 855, 1282.5, 1710 and similarly desired output in terms of the 4 to 20 milliamps is checked and ascending and descending conditions are offered. Now similarly to the right hand side reports where the control valves calibration report one can see the details related to the instruments and one can refer to the table where input is in the range is mentioned that is the percentage actual unit output of the i2p positioner then the with positioner without positioner stroke action whether it's okay at 0 percent 25 percent 50 percent 75 percent 100 percent this is how the typically the records are being maintained with this we are concluding on our today's topic and you can find our channel details as follows if you are new to our channel that is our youtube channel efunda then subscribe to our channel efunda and don't forget to press bell icon to get latest notification of upload of our new video on our channel efunda similarly you can follow us on instagram page similarly you can follow us on our facebook page as well and keep watching our channel efunda for various topics related to engineering and a project. With this, we can assure you this will help you to better your understanding on engineering and a project topic. Keep watching our channel eFunda. Thanks. Watch our channel for new day, new topic.